Hi, I'm Karen Booth, and I'm faculty in the Department of Psychiatry, and I'm going to be introducing self-compassion in this short video. Um, in order to do this, what I'd like to do is do an exercise with you. Um, it's a little bit easier to understand what self-compassion is through this exercise. So what I'd like you to do is think about a time when a good friend of yours was struggling in some way. Maybe they had a difficult conversation with somebody at work, maybe a difficult conversation with somebody at home. Um, they felt really inadequate. Maybe they felt like a loser. They felt like they failed. What did you say to them? And what tone of voice did you use? And if you'd like to pause the video at this point to have a few minutes to think about that, then go ahead and do that. Now I'd like you to do the second part of this exercise. And for this, I'd like you to think about a time when you were really struggling when you had a really hard day or something happened that made you feel inadequate, unworthy, you felt like a failure, maybe you um, lost it with uh, people at work or um, your kids at home, you felt like you really failed. What words did you say to yourself and what tone of voice did you use? And again, you can pause the video to uh, think about this. And if you want, you can even jot it down. So if you're like most people, in fact, 80% of us are much kinder to others, to our good friends, than we are to ourselves. So in doing this exercise, if you discovered that Oh my goodness, you know, I said things to myself that I would never in a million years say to a friend, then know that you're in good company. 80% <laughs> of us are like that. 80% of us are much harder on ourselves than we are on our good friends. So one of the definitions of self-compassion, the informal definition of self-compassion is treating yourself the way that you treat a good friend when you're struggling, when you're having a hard time, when you're encountering difficulties, saying the kind things to yourself that you would say to a good friend. That's the informal definition. And then the more formal definition has three different parts. The first part is mindfulness. And in this context, what mindfulness means is just having a balanced perspective, being aware of what you're feeling, when you're feeling it, being aware of your thoughts, your emotions, maybe even your physical sensations, and, um, and acknowledging them, okay? Just acknowledging that, wow, this is what I'm feeling right now. I'm feeling, you know, kind of like a loser, or I'm feeling um, hurt, or I'm feeling sad. And it may seem really obvious, but truthfully, much of the time, we don't acknowledge our feelings, right? Especially if they're difficult feelings, we might push them away. So in this case, um, mindfulness is just having this balanced perspective that this is difficult right now, I'm acknowledging what I'm feeling, but it's not going to last forever. It doesn't mean it's the end of the world, okay? The second component of self-compassion is common humanity. Common humanity is the understanding that these difficult emotions that we're experiencing is part of being a human being. And again, this may seem really obvious, and in some ways it is, but when we are actually feeling that, when we're feeling lonely or sad or hurt or really disappointed, we often think we're the only ones. We often think, Everybody else is having or is doing fine. It's just me that's struggling in this way. It's just me that's having a hard time with my kids, right? We kind of forget that this is part of life. This is part of being a human being alive on this planet. 
So we tend to feel really isolated. The third component of self-compassion is self-kindness. And this is just simply taking an active role in doing something kind for ourselves. And it may be as simple as saying some kind things to ourselves the way we would uh, with a really good friend, or it might be um, doing what we call behavioral self-compassion, which is you know, um, going for a walk or listening to music or just doing something nice for yourself, okay? So I'd like to do a short practice with you now. Um, this is called self-compassion break. And this is a practice that you can do anytime you're feeling a little bit stressed, um, uncomfortable, um, upset, and you can do it very quickly. You can do it in 10 seconds. But uh, in this case, I'm gonna stretch it out um, when I do it with you now so that you can see all the different parts to it, okay? And hopefully you're not feeling upset or stressed right now in this moment. Um, so what I'm gonna do so that we can practice this particular practice is I'm gonna elicit a little stress in you. And I apologize for that in advance. Okay, so that's just so that we can practice. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is think of a time or think of something in your life right now that you're struggling with. That's, um, that's a challenge. You don't wanna pick the most difficult thing, but something that's maybe a three or a four on a scale from one to 10. Maybe a struggle you're having at work, maybe a minor health problem, um, you know, something like that. And again, if you'd like, you can pause this video so that you can think of it. And try to get a good image of this situation in your mind. So who does it involve? What images come to mind? These are the people or the situation. It's helpful to close your eyes. Go ahead and do that. And now saying to yourself, this is a moment of struggle. This is a moment of struggle. This is difficult. This is hard right now. This is, this is hard. Or a part of me is struggling. So we're just acknowledging what's here. This is the mindfulness component of this practice. You could use your own words to convey that feeling that this is, this is, you know, this is hard. And then the second step to this practice is saying struggle is a part of life. Struggle is a part of life. It's a part of being human. I am not alone. I'm not the only one who feels this way. And it's not necessarily my fault that I feel this way. This is the common humanity component. And then the third step is saying to yourself, so may I be kind to myself in this moment? May I give myself what I need? So this might be just saying some words to yourself, some phrases like, you're gonna get through this, you're strong, you've been through difficult things before. This isn't gonna last forever. 
And if it's difficult thinking of the right words to say, think of what you might say to a good friend who's struggling with something similar. What would you say to them? And can you say those words to yourself? You can do this. You'll make it through. This is the self-kindness component of the practice. And now if your eyes have been closed, you can open your eyes. And just take a moment to notice how you're feeling right now. And if this practice felt a little strange or weird to you, especially the last part, which sometimes does feel strange to people, just remember that we are not used to being kind to ourselves, right? We're not raised that way. It's not part of our culture. We're used to being kind to others. We are raised to be kind to others. We're not raised to be kind to ourselves. So if, if it feels uncomfortable, know that's why, and that with practice, I can vouch for the fact that it feels a lot more comfortable. And in fact, at some point, it just feels really good. Because of course, it feels better to be kind to yourself than to be hard on yourself. And in another video, I'll talk about um, some of the struggles that people have with uh, self-compassion because it's not part of our culture. Okay, and so just remember this can be done very quickly. Um, this, is, this is a moment of suffering or struggle. Um, struggle's part of life, so may I be kind to myself? No, just do it really quickly. If all you have is, is a minute or two. So thanks, this is Self-Compassion Break.